Greetings, old world explorers. Welcome to another old world exploration live with JT follows JC. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me on the show, man. I appreciate it. I'm glad I'm glad you're here. I've been uh, checking out your content lately, and it's uh, the old world's been popping up. So I figured I'd reach out and uh, and uh, see if we could have a chat. So I appreciate you joining me and taking the time. Of course, of course, man. I said, it, yeah, it's funny. I was as we were chatting off air that. Like I, I've been interested in this topic for quite a while, but like it's it's only been more relevant to the stuff I talk about until recently. I've put a few pieces together, but I, when I first started like making videos, I started to notice symbolism and things, and I was doing videos about like Art Deco buildings and just strange things. Like what isn't that like that people don't even like they walk by them every day and they don't even question that building's weird. That's a weird statue. Like why is that here? Why is there all this Roman architecture in America, these Roman gods, Greek gods and stuff like that? Isn't that kind of weird if, if we're a colony of the British and, yeah. you know, just asking those kind of questions. And it's kind of like then I go off on another gun down another rabbit hole looking at something else. And I kind of like put that aside and then come back to this. And it's like but now when I really started getting questioned about the mud flood, you know, so many people say you need to talk about Tataria or the mud flood or whatever. And I'm like, I don't even know where to begin. And then. Or I don't know why it even matters, and then yeah. until until you actually start looking into it and you realize, yeah, it, it matters a lot. Yeah, and it's really strange too because a lot of that architecture you're talking about, especially in the Americas, this is like got like a short shelf life of a couple decades, so mm -hmm. you know, all squeezed into a short period of time. So it's not something we ever really thought I ever really thought about until several, fairly recently. So, and it's a really interesting topic. So, well, right, it's like a, a, I think a lot of us have been talking about like. We didn't know what we were even looking at until recently. And so like, the, I think that's why like the, you could, you know, it's like, it's kind of like the whole hidden in plain sight topic of, wow, I walked past this every day. And I think that as somebody, as a person living in the United States and I live in Virginia, so I don't live that far from the capital, you know, like cities like Washington, DC, or like I went for my buddy's 30th, uh, 40th birthday to New York city. Yeah. And and I remember the, the, the craziest part is when I was in New York City, we went down to the financial district and we we're going to go see like the 9-11 the memorials and all that kind of stuff. And like the new uh, One World Trade Center, which is obviously for us conspiracy theorists, that's um, a trigger. <laughs> it's a very, very triggering. It's like an anchor point. It's an anchor yeah. Point. One World. OK. Yeah. So but the funny thing is, like, I remember when I was walking, you know, through, you know, just, we walked forever when you're in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, like, the oldest buildings look the coolest. I remember thinking, like, I remember, like, as a, as somebody, who I'm like, by trade, um, my family's owned a construction business for a long time. And I could just, like, I was saying, like, whoa, the American Express building, it looks really old. But for some reason, that looks the coolest building I've seen out of all the ones here. Yeah. It, it looks like it's 100 years old. And I'm thinking, like, well, they don't build them like they used to. And, of course, like, without any concept of what I was even saying... <laughs> Yes, very clearly they don't. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, looks like my camera froze, so I'll just. Uh, it's a. Uh, they have a different texture, different quality to them. I find mm -hmm. the old old buildings. It's there. It's they're using stone. They're using brick. They're using almost all hardwoods on the interiors. Mm -hmm. You know, marble floors. Every all the materials are like what we seek out on the high end of things in our modern day. Things that take a lot of time, take a very skilled hand to uh, to construct, you know. Yeah. So it's like, how are they doing this so easily 150 years ago, 120 years ago, you know? Yeah, I think there was a, there was a post, and I think it might have been on Instagram or something like that. And I saw somebody posted a picture of, like, New York City in, like, 1910. And, of course, oh, yeah. it's like, it's just, it looks so old. But then you look at the massive buildings there and it makes it literally like makes no sense to me. Like, I remember thinking that and I'm like, wait a minute, how did they build all that stuff? And then you like even stories like um, I think another thing that was blew my mind was like the New York, uh, the Empire State Building. Yeah. So if you look on the timeline is like, I think they built that right around 1930 ish or something like that. Yeah. In one year, I think. In, in 13 months. OK. And I'm yeah, like, cool. as a contractor, I'm like, well, how did how did they do that? I mean. Obviously, everybody sees the pictures of them like walking on like eye beams, like with no support or anything like that. And that's crazy. But at the same time, like, all right, that's still a lot of work to get done. I mean, just thinking about like 
digging into the ground, putting all the foundations and the footings and everything, and then building up and then finishing the inside as well. Uh-huh. I mean, that is, and I then, mean, it, it makes no sense to me. And these, uh, these things are, then they're not celebrated, right? Like these, these, a lot of this architecture is kind of swept under the rug as uh, unsightly overdone. Uh, you know, the whole Gilded Age is, it's considered uh, um, gaudy, uh, um, you know, like a frivolous mistake almost. Well, it's, it's almost like that, that whole thing where they like, I feel like the, with in the PC age where they deem like good things as bad things, where they talk about like, uh, what is it? Um, colonialization. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that, Oh, those, those colonizers. So they would go, you know, so especially like in South America, like the Spanish or whatever would build these completely amazing buildings on there. And it's like, Oh, that's a bad thing because it's like, it's colonialized now. And you're like, I don't think the people yeah. there hate that. I mean, like, obviously, I'm sure the oppression was bad, but I mean, like, the building is not bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, well the, the oppression is across the board, and that's what we sort of forget, too. Like, everyone's digging their way up out of the poverty, abject poverty from the last 150 years, really. Right. You know? mm. So people claiming claiming oppression, that's the age we live in, right? That, that whole culture. Um, but it is, you're right, it is a way to um, um, take the splendor away from that, that old world architectural majesty yeah like like what we're looking at right now penn station and i said that i think it's absolutely insane so i i believe that i looked on the timeline is that building only stood for like 50 years yeah that's right 1910 to 1963 i have the wikipedia page open here so 50 53 years um yeah and i think they tore down 500 buildings they say to construct this here at the, at the turn of the century, turn of the 20th century. I mean, that, I mean, again, like you look at that building, it makes, like I said, it's, it's, yeah, like, yeah, definitely when you zoom in, you realize actually how big it is. And, yeah. and when you see, when you see the horses and buggies and stuff, look I mean, at the load this guy's carrying. Yeah. Sorry, go I ahead. mean, it really is, it, it blows your mind because, like I said, you look, just the bases of the columns are massive. And, yeah. That it's makes a it, structure. it makes no sense. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It's funny how a lot of these buildings like that. And I went to, um, as I was telling you, I went to Washington D.C. recently. Mm-hmm. A lot of them have that kind of, like, they make it even harder on themselves because they have this courtyard areas, like where you can see it's obviously the exterior wall built around the whole yeah. thing. Like here too. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like that. I think that that's that's very similar to a lot of buildings I saw in D.C. and. Yeah. Like if you, I mean, gosh, it, it defies all reason that we would know that if you built a building like that, you would not, you would want it to stand forever. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't build it like that if, unless you want it to stand forever. And they were built to stand forever. And you know what I think, looking at this here, I honestly think that a lot of what was once there has been removed. A lot of these flat roof areas. Likely. I think it's been scaled. I've seen so many structures that have been scaled back, towers torn down, mansard roofs ripped off with a flat roof replaced with. You know, it's so I'm thinking a lot of these were scaled back um, from what they once were, and they were much I think, more. I think you're. I think you're right on it because yeah, it does feel like that. That those, uh, especially those, those <laughs> with that red the gable dense, those look like they had probably big domes there. I'm, yeah, I'm like guessing. you don't stop here, right? Like you can see what, what's going on down down with the columns and then just like okay let's just chop it off flat and put this little it doesn't make a lot of sense in my mind well it's very similar to what you were were talking about before so we were talking about like so i I was telling you i was watching i got into like john levy's videos and he was talking about the interior of this building and he was comparing it to the pantheon in rome Uh and the right and he was it was he was clowning on obviously the wikipedia where it was basically like oh this building could have been built between like 1 a.d and like 600 so it's like so obviously they have no idea when it was built, and yeah. then and then he was showing the interior of this where he was showing like the I guess the 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 shape of the dome like the architectural features on the inside of the dome, uh-huh. and like looking like this is the same technology, and what I see is like those ends with the gables, uh-huh. where like it looks like yeah it was scaled back, those look very similar to what the Pantheon actually looks like, uh-huh. but but you know what I mean like but the Pantheon has a dome right there. I mean, it has a concrete dome, but I mean, that's what it lo- that's kind of what it, what it looks like. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. So we can almost um, visualize what may have been there, you know, um, 
Either that or they ran out of money and had to put a flat roof on. Now, like I said, when you when you look inside there and the people look like ants, it <laughs> yeah. it's it's under it's unfathomable. I mean, because you really think about it, like what was there was a couple of videos I was I was watching. And so the timeline says these buildings were built in a year or something like that, right? Or built in a year or two. Mm -hmm. It and then it took longer to demo them than it took to build them. Yeah. And that I mean, that's just like it's the most comical thing I've ever, you know, like you can't take any of this stuff seriously. Yeah, and it's it's the reason the Philadelphia City Hall still stands is because they were uh, would have bankrupted the city to demolish the building in the 60s when they wanted to do it. So they decided, no, we're not going to bankrupt ourselves demolishing the old city hall. Well, I mean, it, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like they built them to last. I mean, again, you, like you wouldn't build something out of stone like this to not last. And I think that I think that's the thing that's probably tripped me out the most looking in this space where I kind of thought I knew some stuff about this. Mm -hmm. And then when I think when Levy was kind of comparing like the technology and he's like, this is the same technology. And if we don't know when the Pantheon was built and then this building looks very similar, like the technology looks very similar. What mm -hmm. if they were built in a, in a smaller, you know, what if they were built in the same time period? And that actually like, it kind of almost like melted my brain a little bit. Yeah. Well, what I, what I think is, I think there's a good chance that uh, a lot of these structures that we consider to be old, like 2000 years old, just um, suffered a greater damage than some of these other structures. I, I suspect that's that's a possibility, and they may all be from the same era. Yeah. Well, right. I think that yeah, I think that makes it makes sense because if you really think about it, like the the only real difference between these, some of them look obviously more damaged, and they look some of them look like they were left in disrepair, and some of them were taken care of. But the one yeah. thing I really notice is so. If, we really didn't have like modern cameras, I think, until like, but like around the mid 1800s, maybe like, like 18, I think 1812 or 1818, I think was something like the first like modern camera was invented. So supposedly, they say. So, yeah. Yes, supposedly. <laughs> yeah. But, but when you look at the pictures from those, that, that time period, all the buildings look old. I mean, they don't like nothing looks new. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 according to the timeline, everything was built in the 1800s. So everything would have been this glistening, just white granite and marble yeah. and whatever. But it but it it all looks aged. Yeah, that's that industrial revolution timeline that they're trying to squeeze into the 1800s for us. That's one <laughs> of the ones that really tips me off too. Is like this doesn't make sense. It couldn't couldn't progress that fast everywhere at the same time like that. You're right. So that it's pretty illogical the whole the way that that they put the 1800s timeline together, and I think that's why we're looking into this and poking poking holes in it, right? Yeah, the the 19th century is just like it was like the best of times and the worst of times, right? Because like they were building all the best things, but everything was on fire. Everyone was at war. Like yeah. literally, the America's at war with itself, and the British, and the Spanish, and the Indians, all the same. Yeah, <laughs> all everybody's. Basically, all at the okay. same time, and yet things are being burned down, but they're also, that's not stopping them from rebuilding that stuff right away. Yeah. Un unbelievable. The cities, yeah, the, the big, great Chicago fire is one of the big anchor points in this field of research as well. You know, it's like, okay, the whole city burns down, and they miraculously rebuild it in the next decade. And, now, and then it looks like it's been there for hundreds of years, just like that. And it you know? still looks really old. Yes, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't look brand new, does it? There's some weird stories with Chicago. Like they raised the downtown area. Have you heard of that in Chicago? They raised all the buildings. Apparently, they say they did. So, is it how deep does it go down? I wonder. <laughs> it's I don't know. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, I wanted to show you. Uh, do, are you familiar with the Broad Street Station in in Philadelphia? Um, I I've, I've probably seen it, but I'm but go ahead and show me again. Yeah, that one there. So yeah, this is a short shelf life, shelf life as well. This one, um, 1881 so what, to 1952. This one. I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes no sense. Was that a post office too? Because that that kind of looks like the post office like page Here? where I was looking at. Yeah, it's I mean, very, all the uh, all the post possible. office looked like that too. Didn't yeah, they? Philadelphia was something else. I did a video in Philadelphia, and it just like it had, I had it had me floored for like two weeks before I made the video. I had to kind of compose myself because I think there was a lot going on there. It was the capital, wasn't it, Philadelphia? Yeah, Philadelphia was the capital of the United States until Washington D.C. was. So that's where they did the the, the Continental Congresses 
And so, yeah, so then, but it wasn't, it wasn't that shortly after they, they moved it to Washington DC or was it, or maybe it was that Nuremberg, Bega, but like <laughs> what, but yeah, like, so yeah, I think Philadelphia seems like one of the best examples of some of these, these old world buildings lasted. Well, I mean, you have to ask yourself in the 1880s, why, why, why are they doing stuff like this? Um, like, oh, you've probably worked from heights before. Um, mm -hmm. It get, gets a little nerve wracking once you get up over two stories. And if you see these buildings that are like, what, this is like 10 stories tall. I'm not going to count it off. But and then you get up here and then this is how you're going to finish the top of this. You know? Well, and then you're the... go home to your shack. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say that when you when you look at like this roof mm -hmm. i mean obviously based on what if the the normie take would be like if you just saw the top of it, you'd say that's a church mm -hmm. because that's what we're told cathedrals look like at the top mm -hmm. but and this is go, not a cathedral and you go like that you yeah and then you realize what it like what is that and then you would think then you would think it was a hotel mm -hmm. right? I, I guess the, the hotel yeah it was the hotel for the train station there's the train station attached to it right there mm-hmm yeah, right. but I mean, yeah, obviously because there's so many windows, but at the same time, like that, that that is, I don't, I guess I just like I said, somebody as being in a construction company, and we do like my company has always done metal framing, drywall, and we've done plastering too, uh -huh. but but just in the, just say so I started doing like when I was in high school, I did a little bit with the trades. Mm -hmm. but like the guys who basically trained me when I was coming up, like they all died basically. They're, they're, they're retired since then. Uh -huh. And, and now, you know, who replaced them? Like no one basically. Like, yeah. so, so even kind of like the, the cheap, like the, the cheaper version of the plaster mm -hmm. is, is not done as much. And so we've done stuff like in some of the older places where, where I live, we've done some restoration stuff and, and they don't even make us, we get historical money, I guess, where the GCs do to fix, mm -hmm. restore old buildings. But we don't even have to do them like they did them anymore because, because people can't. It would be too expensive. Mm -hmm. And and I was actually just thinking about this today. And so one of the excuses you get for people to say, why don't they do them like this anymore? Because it would be too expensive. And I thought, and I was thinking about that, like, you know what? You know what really costs the most money when you make, when you make buildings? Mm -hmm. Not the... The man, the man hours. Yeah, yeah. So if you built the building in a year, well, then it, it must not have cost. It must not have cost that much. You know what I mean? Like bu buildings that cost, you know, take many years to build, cost yeah. way more. But if they could build these buildings in a year, mm -hmm. well, then maybe they weren't actually that expensive. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, you have a good point. You know, they they were just quick and really good at it. Yeah. <laughs> then they have to get the materials there too, right? Well, that it was. Well, I mean, obviously, doesn't that kind of you know? If you really think about, it, I know they had trains, you know, know those, that, yeah. at least back in the, those days. But I mean, at the same time, they still had to load the trains up. They had to, you know, get the the stuff from the the train stations to the job sites. They had to store the materials. I mean, like I guess the semi who's in the construction business, like there's a lot of logistics besides just having it. Like you got to get it from the train depot. Yeah. Like like, and then you got to move it around the city. Yeah, it's obviously and, very well. <laughs> it looks and, very busy. And then you've got to get it up however many stories, depending on where you're at in the build process. Absolutely, so that's a system. that's a that's a great point too. Because I think that, like, as somebody who does drywall, it's obviously way easier than whatever they. they I'm sure they built the walls out of like, what is it like, let like uh, I, I, iron and lath oh. and like yeah. wood slats and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. so like we would have to get a boom truck or a crane. In order to put the drywall into these windows, mm -hmm. well, like, yeah, how are they getting these things up these these heights? Manpower. That's what, <laughs> lots of guys. Lots of lot, yeah, that's why. Why those are the kind of rebuttals I get on, on a lot of my videos. Like, it's just they just had a lot of people that needed to work, and all those people had really good work ethics, and they were all really skilled as well. And then, mm -hmm. but the populations of these places are really low. Sometimes I'll target a place that has a very small population just to illustrate that point a bit better. But uh, you can't just keep throwing. Or some people will say, "Well, they brought in a crew from Chicago to build that, in that small <laughs> town." It's like, well, have you seen Chicago at the time? Because that was happening there too. So it's very bottom, yeah. oh, good. No, no, you go. I was going to say that it's funny because me and my buddy we did a um, a movie called Ancient Angels, and 
it's kind of like obviously just based on the title you can tell it's like it's it's very similar to ancient aliens where you know that's i think maybe that's where i first really got into the space where you're looking at the megaliths from from obviously the ancient times and as like i said somebody and so you, when you when you understand like the great pyramid and and all the other things around those areas where they are saying, oh, well, they just got slaves to do it. They just got a bunch of them. And you're like, well, they would have had to know what they're doing, though. You know what I mean? It's kind of like they must have got the, the best skilled slaves ever. And also, and also at, at some point, the manpower means nothing when they're trying to maneuver around really tight spaces and they've got perfectly, you know, cut granite and boxes that barely fit in there and that you couldn't fit people. You know, so, but it, there's this... There is this almost like just just completely just I don't know just ignorant take that that they just had a lot of people to do this and again like so if I needed to get a job done right now I couldn't just go get any ten guys off the street to do it they would have to know what they're doing yeah so it's it's a mental laziness I think when people just say oh I don't really want to think about it so just lots of people is good enough for me I think well, it's that- you know mm-hmm. go ahead no i was gonna say that well i saw another video when they were talking about that where it's like that most of us at some point in our lives have done went on some sightseeing tour and we looked at something like something like what you're showing right now and we mm-hmm. said wow how did they do that but but we really didn't actually think about it because it was like because at one point you just said well it's there so obviously it got built somehow and then you just kind of like forgot about it but like once but when you actually really try to like really think about it Mm -hmm. like actually think about it now you actually think like wait a minute like i don't i can't actually process that in my mind yeah and that's what we're trying to do with this research is trying to because they for the longest time they they don't really want us to think about our our true past they want us you know i say they uh, but, but society in general we're trained to um um entertain ourselves you know we have the hollywood we have the conventional narrative that we're taught in schools and then you just sort of fall in line and you know if you step outside of those norms and you become the uh, the outcast right absolutely but they want us that's what they want us they don't want us to have inquiring minds or critical thinking skills you know it doesn't serve um the ones who are hiding whatever they're hiding from us and we know that there are lies at, at the upper levels in our society you know, we've, we've witnessed that in the recent Yes. Years. Well, that's the funny thing. I was just thinking about that. Yeah, look, just look at the inside of that. I mean, like, the outside's impressive enough, but then you look in the inside of it, and it's like, that is... I, I don't care how many guys you had to do that. Like, that's not yeah. that's not a matter of manpower. That's a matter of, like, a tech... That's a technology. Yeah. You know, I mean, what, that, that, that speaks of a technology because it's like, that's not all hand done. Because well, nobody's hand is that steady. Well, that's that's what gets me. You know, that's part of part of the uh, the draw of uh, anything handmade is the human error that comes with it. Right. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that's part of what you're paying for. You know, when you get something handmade, it, you know, it's crafted. But this, there, you're right. At, at some level, this is, starts to become um, something beyond that. There is no evidence of human error in the, the, the way that these things are assembled that I can see. This is no. the Bronx Library, by the way. I don't know if it's the one you'd mentioned earlier, but yeah, that's what. I, so I was saying that if you, if you look at that thing and you compare that to the Pantheon in Rome, mm. I, I mean, I, I'm I'm guessing that the Pantheon is way bigger, you know, just because obviously I know how impressive. Because I think that had like the biggest concrete dome, unsupported dome, in like the world until like yeah, to like modern times. Mm-hmm. And so then you look at something like this, and you look at Penn Station, and you're like, that is obviously the same tech. Uh-huh. whatever they use i mean because it's it's almost identical like i said this might be a, a little bit smaller but uh-huh. it yeah like if you took somebody who's got a very skilled hand, i mean it had to be poured at some point like you know what i mean like that's like that's what that makes sense to me if they made a mold but but still you'd have to make a perfect mold yeah you still have to make the mold that's exactly right which is not so, easy which again it's not it's not easy and it's like the funny thing about like a lot of the the architectural designs in these things yeah, like there you go. Like it like it doesn't look the same. It looks the same, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, and you see this in a lot of the domes, like the state capitals in the states. My God, 
They're incredible buildings. And then it's not something you ever really hear about the state capitol buildings. Well, you know, that that was actually funny. So that was, that's another place along the rabbit hole that I went down and I was like, so like, obviously, if, if you guys don't know by my username, JT follows JC. So JC is Jesus Christ. So I'm a Christian guy, but I'm a I'm very conspiratorial. So like, I'm one of those guys who think all the elites are worship the devil, basically, <laughs> <laughs> to, to not be subtle about it. So I've said that I made a video a long time ago about saying that when you go into like the ancient ruins, like the archaeologists always say they they got two takes usually. This is a temple or it was a tomb. Mm -hmm. And and then I started going around like to the state capitol buildings in the United States. And I was like, like if somebody found this, if you found ruins of this place, what would you say this was? And I said, it looks like either it's a temple or it's a tomb. I mean, because like that's basically your two options. Because you go around them, they're so ornate. And and I think that's what I was like. I was blown away. I think there's like in Minnesota, and I think um Iowa. I mean, you just almost every state in the United States has a capital building that makes no sense. I think well, like Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska has got some insane building. It like have you seen Des Moines? Yeah, Demona, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like five they, domes? <laughs> they make it makes no sense. And again, like the we are told in in school, and it's funny as you mentioned school. School that yeah, the school is teaching you not to think. It's teaching you to regurgitate information by memorization. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to think because like when you actually think about it, you're like, wait a minute, if if we are told that back in those days, like our, our founding fathers wanted limited government. Why the heck would we ever allow them to buy, build that with our tax dollars? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Didn't they throw tea into the harbor because <laughs> they didn't like paying taxes? And it's like, hey, we want to make a gold dome over here. We want to we want to we want to build a like a palace yeah. where the where the, where the public servants work. Does that like you know what I mean? Like doesn't that it doesn't that sound a contradictory? Yeah. No, five domes, mean. not just one dome, five domes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. funny, it's, it's funny that in, in today's day and age, it'd be like, okay, so we see all the problems with, with our countries. We, you, 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 you're in Canada, right? Yeah. But we, but I think we both are kindred, kindred spirits in the fact that we could both look at our governments and say, you guys waste so much money. Like, what are you doing with the money that you've got? I don't and know. Then, I, I'm really, I like the Canadian government quite a bit, actually. Oh, do you? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, we, got, saying, we have problems up here too. But you know, what I'm saying, like, can you imagine if they said, if if like your Congress or our Congress said, "Hey, I want to build this," and we would be like, "What?" Yeah. But, like, it's don't you more. have more important things to do than this? And, and it doesn't seem like a luxury, like a luxury here. And that's what I was saying when I went to Washington D.C. I said. The only thing that makes sense, and this makes sense in kind of like the ancient Egyptian thing where you'd say, this must have been a time of great prosperity. Mm -hmm. Like it must have been a time of peace and prosperity because because be. other than that, it makes no sense. I mean, like it really does seem like a time where they had all the time in the world to to make beautiful art, beautiful architecture, music, all the things. But when yeah. you're when you're worried about the bare necessities in life, you're at war like well then maybe you'd say i don't know this one town just burned down maybe we should build like rebuild that place before we, <laughs> we like make this this roman you know this just this roman temple here for our yeah. statesmen i mean that makes no sense it can't be, it can't come out of a time of conflict and strife you know they say the states is just coming out of the civil war so you've got a divided people and all of a sudden, they're shooting up these buildings, these incredible buildings, even though the you know the dividing lines are clearly drawn as according to the history they tell us. It's to me, it's bullshit. As far as no, I no, I, I, I mean, I'm with you because I. That's what I was saying. Like that, when you think about it. So, like what we're told in the United States is that we fought a revolutionary war in the late 1700s, mm -hmm. and then, and then immediately, like right after that. So they, the United States moves their capital from Philadelphia to, to, um, to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And then, then right away, basically, they're fighting the British again. And the British basically burn everything down in Washington, D.C. 
Mm -hmm. So like all these buildings, like that's what I said. I was, I, we went there with, I went there with the wife a couple of weeks ago and we were reading some of the stories and it was like all the, all the classic buildings were like, well, they built it this age and then it burned down and then they built it again. And then it's like, and when they were building all them all again, it was right in the middle of the civil war. And if you yeah. think about it, like geographically, so like the Washington DC probably was not a great ge geographic location at that time, right? Because it's right at the edge of the Mason Dixon line. Hmm. So, right, you know, so, so Virginia is the South and obviously Maryland is the North. So Washington DC is right in the middle. Hmm. So meanwhile, they're, they're building the Capitol building. So you know what I mean? Like right at the same time, I mean, it makes, it makes no sense. Is DC like Switzerland? As far as there was there no conflict within DC or I don't know. Well, that, I guess, that, I mean, I guess, I mean, again, this is obviously what we're told. It's, it, yeah. it's told that the South wants to secede, but at some point the, the South actually does go into the North and start fighting. But I mean, as far as I can tell, they never went to DC to try to burn it down or anything like that. Cause That's the British, the British, the British just did that. That's interesting. But, That's but they do go fight like, you know, they do fight like, so like Gettysburg, you know, it's like a Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So they, they pushed into the North at some point. Yeah. I mean, what we're, what we're told is obviously the, the North had way more resources than the South. And I, so, I, so, so it was a kind of a war of attrition. They could never win yeah. because they, they didn't have the money to fight against the North. I, and I, to me, like, it, yeah, it just, it seems like, uh, why the need to reenact? I find why the, the, the reenactment part of that story is very strange to me. Like the, the civil war reenactments that go on. <laughs> right. On right. There. Well, it's, it's funny like, as, yeah, somebody, as somebody who's like a, I was like a, you know, red, white, and blue kind of guy. Like I grew up in a military town. I remember not like wanting to know much about the civil war. Cause I thought it, it's just, I rather hear about like the, the wars we won. <laughs> than like this ugly time where we we're fighting against each other and but yeah like why would you want to reenact that because like it's i mean like literally it, it was kind of like brother against brother like you're not like yeah. that's that's not a pleasant memory for the united states yeah it seems Shouldn't like be. a re re repetition of trauma almost like uh makes me wonder if the uh well, the other really strong um, presence I see in my research in the States is, is the Masonic presence. Um, from oh. town to, it doesn't matter where you go. They're everywhere, you know? Well, well, that well, that is exactly why I think I started to get interested in the architecture because I knew, like, the, the Art Deco, the Freemason architecture. I, that's that's kind of what I was like. I was looking for symbolism in, in, in architecture, and obviously the Freemasons are putting it in there. But now I'm starting to wonder if what the Freemasons built other than a bunch of lies was did they just put their symbols on existing buildings and claim them as their own? Well, I have to wonder, I do wonder if the initiation into the secrets, part of the secrets is the secret of the old world that is being kept from the, the unsuspecting public. And then if you're in the know, then you're in the know that what these actually come from. That's where I'm starting to lead with learn, lean with my research. I think that I, it, you know, it's funny because that's, like I said, I started in the way back machine. So I was talking about like the pyramids and stuff. And that's why I was always thinking like when you hear about the Illuminati stuff and you see the people flashing up like the eye of Horus and then they're making like the triangle, like they're making the pyramid symbol. And I thought, oh, this is a secret knowledge of like I was thinking like as a Christian, like the pre-flood era, the antediluvian age where, again, I think that I think it's some of like the most megalithic structures were built before Noah's flood. So yeah. I was thinking like, so there's, there was clearly a knowledge of something before then that, cause again, we don't know what it was. Like, how did they build the pyramids? You know, people will debate that until we're all dead and gone. Yeah. Like, so how did they do it? We don't know, but I do believe that some people do know. And I think some people know why they were there. And I don't think they were tombs because again, uh -huh. they didn't find any mummies in them. I think that they were, but it's interesting. Yeah. So then now, so now I started making the connections with this stuff and it's, I feel like there's a, there's a lot of similarities where again, like if you look at the mansard roofs and you look at all like the domes and like the weird antenna things, a yeah. lot of people have made the connection where, Hey, maybe the, the, the pyramids were some kind of energy, you know, machine, some kind of yeah. a energy, energy conductor. Uh -huh. Well, maybe that's what these things were because it, it makes so much more sense that 
if you would spend this much time, unless again, unless it was a time of peace and prosperity and you could just make beautiful things, uh -huh. there was a practical application for that. Well, so we know it was not a time of peace based on what they tell us, uh -huh. you know, so, so either that's a lie when they built it or it's a lie that it, it didn't have a practical use. Cause like I said, again, if these people are worried about bare necessities, why would they take the time to make a roof that look like, looks like that? Yeah, I, th I think the one of the biggest things you talked about how they, they put us in the schools to, you know, regurgitate um, what they want us to learn. I think one of the one of the biggest parts of that is the chronology of the past. Because when because when I try to peer into the past, I have a chronology in my head that's been implanted on into my consciousness through the schooling system and through of course everyone around me but that mm. all comes from the same place so what i suspect with my research is that they've they've distorted the timeline dramatically yeah. and they've stretched mm. it they've moved things further away from us um than we think like we, you were talking about noah's flood um i suspect this cataclysm and resulting flood um probably happened a lot more recently than um even the bible may be depicting so i'm sure they could happen I mean, with anything right I mean, it could be, I guess, I guess the thing is, we don't really know. I think that the, we've, I've taken a lot of things just based on like, obviously in faith that, that the people were telling us the truth. I mean, I guess I never had any reason to doubt them, yeah. but I do think that one thing that I remember really kind of made me really kind of question, like I didn't, it made no sense to me was that they told us that Ro the Romans knew how to build things. They knew how to do things that we don't know how they did it. And I was mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. We're told that the Romans wrote everything down. Mm -hmm. And we're also told that the Romans ruled the whole modern world. So like that people, I think a lot of people don't understand, don't know that like the Romans like founded Paris and mm -hmm. London and like, like this, all the cities in Europe, they basically created those cities and the Romans were not in the business of just destroying things and just leaving ashes. Mm -hmm. They set up governors and prefects. And so if the Romans ru ruled the whole world, the Romans weren't just sitting in Rome ruling the world. They were ruling, ru you know, they were ruling it from the places. So how did Rome fall and then uh -huh. things get lost? Because the Romans were everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, the, like, so how did that knowledge ever get lost? And then I started to think that makes no sense. Cause I was even, like, even if you go back to the very first century, I looked up like did Rome. Uh, I think Nero had like working machines. He had a he he lived in a place that actually had a rotating tower that had ball bearings and everything. And they had, and I think they even had the means to like use water pressure to explode mountains. I mean, you could look this up. Yeah. I mean, this is this is not conspiratorial. This is like they had all kinds of the Roman concrete is superior to the concrete we have now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that makes no sense does i mean like i don't think it, i don't think it makes sense because we're supposed to be more advanced than them well it tells us we're not on a linear timeline through human um development right? oh is that oh like i see the, the building you got right there that's the uh the library of congress in washington dc i went to that i when, actually was just i was just there mm -hmm. in this building recently yeah i was just i was just there uh like about a month ago maybe like this three one, weeks ago this is in my top probably my top 10 um this is a ridiculous structure Absolutely. I went, yeah, that was funny. Cause it was like, cause I, I'm, I'm about three hours away from, you know, depending on traffic, I'm about three hours away from DC and I've been around DC a lot, but I remember like looking at that one and I was like the library of Congress, I had to go there. And I went inside that building and I said, this ain't a library. I said, this is, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's so ornate on the inside. And the funny thing is that when you go to where the library section is, it's not actually that big. It's like, I mean, where the books are, there's not a lot of room for the Smart. books. Yes. I would say that, I would say if you, if you turned a page loud, everybody in the whole library could hear it because it sounds like it's made to, for sound to carry. Uh -huh. I mean, just look how it's built. Yeah. And I guess like that kind of makes sense when you think about like the whole idea of like energy and frequencies and vibrations. It, yeah, there's not one place in this whole this whole building that doesn't have a a, a cool architectural design, a mural or, or whatever. It's unbelievable. 1888 to 1894, I think I had the date there. I don't know. I just I just can't envision the people of that time frame that in my mind doing this 
at that time. You know, I just can't see it. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like you, I don't, I don't see how anybody in any timeline did this. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that's the yeah. thing. It's like, but, but more to the point, again, like I said, that what we're told is that the, our founding fathers, again, it's funny. Always people say founding doesn't mean they found these <laughs> things, but like yeah. the, the people who, who basically the, from the history that we've been taught founded America and they wrote all the documents and said, they did not want a strong central government. Mm -hmm. So at what point did the people say, hey, we're not going to give you our money to build to build DC like it's like it's ancient Rome? Yeah. Because that makes again, that makes no sense. And again, like these people are like they're fighting the British, they're fighting the Indians. They're like they're trying to expand. We're, we're told they're trying to expand westward. Mm -hmm. And so, like, these are very this is like, I mean, this. This kind of reminds me of like when I read the Bible and you read about like that when so King David was obviously one of the greatest kings in Israel. So what he did was but obviously he conquered all around Israel, you know, like conquered all the people. And of course, when you read in the Bible, he's bringing gold and silver and bronze and all the precious metals and wood and everything back to Israel. And then Solomon continues to get even stronger and then they build the temple. Right. But, but because they're so rich and they're so dominant in the in the time that they live. Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward to 1776 or whatever in 1800, like the, the United States are not conquering anyone. You know, like they're no. not getting spoils from uh, from foreign wars. No, they're just trying to get established. Yeah. So like, so, you know, what I'm saying like that does not make sense from what we know. It makes sense that the, the the ancient Romans did that because, again, they were dominating around the world. Mm -hmm. So they would have been taking plunder from these places and they would be building our, their capital to be awesome. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now explain to me how that makes sense that the that Washington, D.C. looks like this. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's not even just D.C. too. Like, it's, it's amazing what I find across the states. Um, along these lines, especially the state capitals, you know, but courthouses too are, are pretty ridiculous. I, I, mm -hmm. I dive into those quite a bit. And, well, uh, I think that, I think the, even the, the, what's even more suspect is, is the West coast. Uh -huh. Because again, like, like I said, it's funny if you look at the history we've been taught is that Lewis and Clark were just going to find what they're trying to find, like another um, way to get, I guess, another shipping lane or something. And so they yeah, were going yeah. across the, the Mississippi to, find, to basically just explore and, and it's so comical when you think about it you got like two guys in like a little a little little posse going mm -hmm. across the western part of the united states to discover things and this is the this is in the 1800s are they horses was, lewis and clark that was their thing there well they did they certainly didn't have uh anything well they didn't have anything supposedly back then this was like 1803 to 1806 i believe yeah. lewis and clark that's, yeah that's way back yeah wow but I mean, but you're thinking, but you're thinking about, but it, it's really not way back when you consider that by like the the mid 1800s, like you have well established cities in the west on the west coast. Yeah, this is San Francisco. I jumped over to my San Fran file since we were talking about it. Um, San Francisco, easily be Spain. This is Spain, San Francisco that also burned down like multiple times. I think. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, John Levi in his book, he talks about, uh, I think it's a mid 1850s, just after the gold rush, 49, right? 1849, the 49ers, I think is mm -hmm. when the gold is discovered in that area. And then I think uh, it's four to six fires in the span of two or three years, ripping through the encampment there. And then, of course, you have the San Francisco earthquake and subsequent fires. Well, you have, I think it's, I think he's, I, I believe I remember was watching one of his videos recently. It was like, I think he was saying that. In 1849, there was like a thousand people in San Francisco. Yeah. And so by like, I think the, the one of the famous, like, what is it? The panoramic view of San Francisco was like 1873, I believe. Mm -hmm. I know the one you mean. Yeah. And it, for, for one thing, it's like, you look at the picture, it looks old. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the building, every, that's what I'm saying. All those old pictures, all the buildings and stuff have age to them. Yeah. And that, and it's like the city just goes on forever. And it's like, okay, so there was a gold rush. Did everyone find gold who went? Because how did they afford all the buildings they did? And it's like, again, you're, 
this is like before like the railroad, the, the transcontinental railroad was mm-hmm. established. Right. So they were, they were in San Francisco and then they just built this place. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's funny because I said, I, I'm, I was joking on one of my podcasts. I was saying that when I watch like, like Western movies, like, like tombstone mm-hmm. and those kind of movies, like when I was a kid watching that stuff, I would have said, well, that had to be like 500 years ago. You know, I'm being like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of kidding. I'm exaggerating. But at the yeah. same time, like I never realized that like, you know, like uh, famous cowboys like Wyatt Earp actually lived into the into Hollywood days where they were training like the early Hollywood actors how to act like cowboys in the in the Western movies. Wild Bill Hickok. Yeah. So you, that's what I'm saying. It's like the, that, that's what I'm saying. It's so funny. So you're thinking like so our idea of time when you when you don't think about it is mm-hmm. it seems like there's time for it. And then you actually start to think about like, OK, so I'm, I'm 45 years old now and I'm like, wait a minute. If I really thought about like if I go back to when I was born and like 40 years before then, like you're getting pretty far back in the timeline. And, and how much have I've seen the progression as far as like building cities and stuff like that? I've, I've never in yeah. my whole lifetime, I've never seen them build like a city, like anything no. like we've seen on it. You know, like no, that's like never a city happened. spring up from and a population quadruple. No, know? no, nothing. I mean, there's there's been no cities in my lifetime that I can remember in the United States that like went from insignificant to significance. Yeah. That's so then you so then you think about yeah, so then you think about like all the cities that happened in the 1800s that by what means and like and why? Again, like you think like as an adult, you would say you'd have to move somewhere to there'd be some industry that would propagate that. Like, I mean, again, them finding gold makes sense in a city like Tombstone, Arizona, that literally is like looks like a wooden city with dirt roads because people are not trying to stay there. They're literally just trying to get gold. Right. Yeah. And then they're going to go back to where they were. Okay, gold and get out. Yeah. But they're not building homes there like they did in San Francisco. So like, what's the difference? You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's a mining town, right? Yeah. And then you have San Francisco that was not a mining town. That, that, that's, that's, that makes no sense. That's what I mean. I think San Francisco was, was like 80 miles away from the goal where the gold was actually being found. (laughs) Something ridiculous, you know, I've read some strange accounts, um, stories of the streets being filled up with uh, goods that are coming in on the ships. They've just, it's just so bountiful that the potholes in the streets or the rut holes in the streets are just filled up with, with, with goods, you know, like valuables, strange stuff like that. You know, there's, there's strange accounts from that, that, that uh, era there. You, you know, it's a, you know, it's a crazy, a crazy video I saw about a year ago. It was, it was this young woman who she was going through the streets of uh, San Francisco. And at some point there was a very famous, I guess, um, graveyard in like somewhere around the middle of the city. Mm-hmm. And, I believe they said unless you like basically had some kind of family that that tried to stop the government to, or they could move the plots. If you didn't have if there was nobody who basically protested, they took all the old graves, supposedly because this was a very valuable property. Yeah. They dug up all the old graves and they took the tombstones and they used the tombstones to be like pavers in the streets and like made, they literally made the gutters out of them. Have you heard oh, that? Wow. No, no, but that's interesting. I mean, but yeah. it's like, I mean, talk about disrespectful. I mean, like yeah, literally totally, you, totally. you could see like, you know, like a family member's tombstone is like turned into a gutter and, yeah. but she was actually going through and she was looking and she could see some of the dates and, and part of a name. And I was, and I started to think, and I didn't think, I mean, other than that, I just thought that's disrespectful, mm-hmm. but, but now I'm thinking about it. I wonder if some of the dates on the tombstones didn't really make sense, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. is it, po- is it possible that those, that, that made no, like the, the timeline, timeline. Did, yeah, they had it, didn't, these it, things. it yeah. didn't work. Yeah. It's uh it's very possible. There's a lot of strange things that are, that don't make a lot of sense that probably for the, again, for the longest time, we probably just didn't think about if we heard it, you know, just, Oh, that sounds strange. And you move on. But when you really ponder on it, um, this, this starts to sound very silly. This is San Francisco again, like it's still looking like what we saw in DC as well, right? This is their uh, um, city hall, I, I believe. Yeah. yeah, it makes it, I, yeah, I think some of the craziest ones where I think he, like, was it John Levy talks about like uh, Salt Lake City uh-huh. and um, like Portland and Seattle? They make no sense. They yeah. make the, the timeline of those places makes 
zero sense. <laughs> yeah, I was I was just looking at the uh, what is it the um, Spokane City Hall. Have you seen that one? I want to show. No, you. I haven't. I've have not. You know Spokane in Washington State? Yeah, it's not far well, from where I am, so I know it fairly well. Um, it's a one-year wonder. See if this will come up for me. You tell me if one year makes sense. Oh Let's gosh. See. Yeah, right. <laughs> Spokane, Washington. Yep, these were just settlers and cowboys. You know, do they just said, hey, let's we need a town hall too? They had a fire in the 1880s. In that area, like Vancouver had a fire in the 1880s. Seattle had a fire in the 1880s. Spokane, Calgary as well. So the timeline shifts as we move to the West, but the story doesn't really change. No, it's all the same. You know, it's another funny one is that I'm a, I'm a big movie guy. And if you guys remember Heath Ledger, he was in that movie called 10 Things I Hate About You. And I want to say, I'm not sure if that was, um, I don't think that was Spokane, Washington, but it was... Um, what was the other big city in Washington? Um, Tacoma. 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 Yeah. So in that movie, it takes place in Tacoma, Washington. In the high school yeah. in the movie, 10 Things I Hate About You, yeah. it's like the high school is in this castle. Hmm. And I was like, I did a little video about that. And I said, it makes no sense that any, like nobody went to a school like that. Because yeah. it makes, it like literally it's like a castle on like the bay or the water or something like that. It's like, it's it's gorgeous. I know it. I know it. Um, yeah, I think it's called it's called um what is it? Stadium High School. Yeah, and it's stadiums way down below it. Yeah. Yeah, oh, like yeah. So, th no, so no, this is this is a postcard of it. Okay, so I, I did a video about this and so here's here's what we're told about this place. Okay, so back when they started building this thing, like um Tacoma, Washington had about twenty or thirty thousand people and they were gonna build this luxury hotel. Well, during the during the building of this thing, there was a you know the economy went to garbage i guess and then so they couldn't finish building it and then also a fire broke out on the inside and all the building materials got burned up in the inside of it oh, and luck. but but luckily the the school district decided to buy it and turn it into a hotel room i mean turn it into a high school like within like five years and i was like wait a minute okay me thinking about this all right first of all if a guy if, if somebody was building this who was had all this money mm -hmm. why would they couldn't ride out the bad economy they didn't expect like some bumps in the road like they would if you're going to build a hotel you know like obviously this is a, this is a long-term investment right this is not a rich quick you know get, get rich quick <laughs> scheme right yeah yeah so why wouldn't you just finish it because obviously you're you're pretty invested at that point once you built the whole outside and then if the economy was so bad that they could not finish it how did the school district have the funds to build this and then convert it into a high school. Uh -huh. And I was like, wait a minute, that, that, that obviously makes, it makes no sense because again, Access, we're, right? we're, yeah, but we're, th this is again, so this is the time when we're told that they didn't have money printing machines, right? They, they couldn't just burr and just print out the, the hundred dollar bills. They would actually had to get money to do this. And most people would have said, well, we're kind of just uh, gold miners, and I don't even care if my kids can read. <laughs> so, like, yeah. no, you're not taking my my money to build a, a castle for the kids. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting perspective you're bringing across um, with the the, the uh, ethic. Like, it, centralized government is not is not uh, um, what the idea was, right? The grand idea. But we're seeing what we're seeing. If we're if we're going by what we're seeing, it would have had to have been all this money being dumped in. Um, by governments to construct these massive structures, which contradicts that uh, philosophy, I guess. Well, we're, we're, we're told this is before income taxes. Mm -hmm. So this is before income taxes. And then, of course, even see like movies about like them, ex you know, like settlers expanding westward. They were giving out free land, mm -hmm. you know, in a lot of these places. So what are they yeah. taxing them right away? Yeah. Like so, so do they have did they have property taxes back then? I mean, like I don't know how they funded any of this. I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, obviously, I know now. It's like, no, they did. These the buildings were already here. I mean, because it because otherwise, it makes no sense. The people who, I mean, when you see the Oregon Trail and the people who mm -hmm. went on it, 
were those the people who were building the buildings? It, yeah, it's nonsensical. Right. Well, well, yeah. We, my wife and I, recently watched uh, one of the one of the um, um, Yellowstone offshoots, 1883, I think it was, where mm -hmm. they're going from Fort Worth up to eventually they end up in Montana. They're trying to get to, to Oregon. Oregon's the dream on the coast, right? But mm -hmm. um, they portray again the Hollywood um, um, conventional narrative that there's just nothing but you know, Indians in the prairies and uh, and this is in 1883 and a lot of these buildings that i find um some of these are are built right in and around that time right so what we're being shown through hollywood and what we're seeing in this research is a direct contradiction i think too yeah and i think that's what i was saying that when i was watching like these western movies you really i mean when you when you think about the wild west in america like mm -hmm it seems like it was such a long period of time, but when you really think about it, it's like, they're really just showing you like a generation of people. You know, yeah. that's why it's like all the cowboys basically had gunfights with each other because it's like, they're, they're all contemporaries. Yeah. And so like, yeah. there's this, it's a very short time where the West was wild mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you really think about it, like it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of time for it to be wild. So we're told like, yeah, you have like, these Indian tribes that are very violent. And then there's all these battles with the Indian tribes. And then you have people basically making a living <laughs> playing poker cussing and shooting each other all the time yeah meanwhile you have a very civilized place like in big cities like like very in very close vicinity of these places uh -huh. yeah yeah and Good so point. like so that yeah so it makes it makes no sense that that yeah why is there's these lawless places i mean it kind of makes sense obviously you have some town where you don't have law everywhere but i mean at the same time the way I was thought about, it, I thought everyone's out east, right? Like yeah. all the all the real people are, you know, all the real like kind of settlers and the real established areas. But then you you realize that there's plenty of stuff on the west coast based on what we're told. It's funny you say that about the law, right? Because again, one one of the things I look at a lot are the courthouses. I've got pretty much all of them archived on my computer here. <laughs> um, and it doesn't matter what state you go, Washington, Colorado. Um, and of course, a Midwest, ridiculous. They they were building these courthouses, 1870s to 1910. It's like the sweet spot. Um, so that would be the lawless era. That would be, you know, right. the Cowboys and Indians era. But it's but you're seeing these what three four story courthouses with these domes and like, like who's building that? Well, there's gunfights going on in the street. <laughs> right, right. We're showing in these these little towns that are holding people up with like with like one deputy and like a sheriff. And then they have, they got these guys behind these these bars in this wood building. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's like, don't they have to justify the fact that they built this gigantic courthouse? <laughs> like, like, very closely yeah, they need more criminals, right? They need more criminals. <laughs> I, did, I mean, I, I, I think that I mean, I think what seems very obvious, like once you start to think about it, it's like there are all these places are repurposed mm -hmm. because it's like, yeah, you you think about it. I mean, it kind of makes sense that. When you see these these very impressive buildings with these massive towers and they all become like um basic town halls or post office it's because the government took them over mm -hmm. because the yeah because it, be, right? yeah because it doesn't make sense again like that again we are told that that they didn't have income taxes back then so how did the governments have that much money to build stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, again again the, again th this is the time where like that I, I'm I'm of the belief that America is definitely an empire, and they would never use that word of we would never use that word of ourselves hmm. because it's a again in the age of uh, colonization and that stuff they don't want us to mm -hmm. be called empire. Mm -hmm. That's a dirty word. But at the same time, like this is a time when the, the United States is is kind of really expanding. It's not it 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 wouldn't have a lot of money. You know, again, yeah, like the, the, South, the South was basically poor. I mean, like we're, what we're told is that the Southern states didn't even have enough money for their soldiers to have uniforms after a while. Right. So then so that but at the same time, they're obviously building crazy stuff in the South as well. And yeah. so that so that the, the governments of these places would not actually be. Yeah, they wouldn't they, they would not have just the unlimited funds to build you know, luxury buildings. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Practicality would be number one. You know, get build what you need to function. 
you know, not an extra couple stories with uh, spires, mansard roofs, and you know, cones on top of the the turrets and all the rest of it. And this is the Tacoma, Tacoma one again here. Right, and this and this is not even I guess, and this is not even counting when you like actually get into like the star forts and just weird, like yeah. basically uh, geographic things. They shape the coastlines and and ports and and all these things. It's like I think that's one of the things that really kind of like the buildings are one thing. But then when you actually see like the, the cities look very well planned out, mm -hmm. like the way the streets are laid out and then like yep. the canal systems and all the things, it's canals, like yeah. they're well thought out. So it's kind of like that if you just had a bunch of cowboys moving westward, you know what I mean? Are they just allowed to build whatever they want? Who's in charge of like making sure that the streets are laid out the way that they are? Yeah. And who's who's getting the bricks there to build these things? And who's... It, is no. quarrying the stones well right well yeah it's, it's it's one thing to say hey i've got a little bit of money and i'm moving out to san francisco and then even even these days like i know that's where we're located at there's certain places in north carolina where they would try to get us to go down and work there because they don't have enough contractors to work there <laughs> you know what i mean so what would it was what was it like in you know 1850 and you'd be like well i really want a castle here and then you'd be like well buddy there's not um <laughs> there's no, I, there's I stone workers to build it. You know? Well, we got we got this one crew, but basically they're in Chicago right now. But of course, yeah. what we're told is that the crews from Chicago are building them, not just in Chicago, but in New York City and Philadelphia, mm -hmm. Baltimore, you know, everywhere, Nebra yeah. Nebraska, San Fran. I mean, yeah, like so, there was an endless supply of people who could do it, or there wasn't. And the the contractors were basically just kind of maybe maybe doing a little light reno to some of these these buildings yeah. that were already there, uh, making modifications, making it areas usable, certain areas usable. Um, yeah, that's that's what I suspect is, is has been going on. And also, a lot of these the narrative behind the, these structures were given an architect, just like a sort of a bare bones uh, architect name. Often you can't even search the architect, um, mm -hmm. and often the architect was chosen in a contest. You know, the, the, they'll say the the locality put out a contest for architects to design the, their next courthouse. And this is the guy who won. He was 27 years old. He'd never done it before, <laughs> but he churned out this crazy looking castle. You know? Well, it makes it makes sense that like you'd have architects who don't know what things cost if they were just real young. And they said, well, I think castles are pretty cool. So I'd like to see more things look like castles. Like, <laughs> these I like days, fairy tales. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, I like I like all that stuff. So like I think I like the medieval style. So let's just yeah. build prisons and schools that look like castles. And somebody would say, eh, I like the idea, but it's not really very practical because those are very expensive. And um <laughs> we don't really have people that are Europe like the European style, those people have been long dead. But yeah. for some reason, I guess nobody told them no and they just did it. Oh, well, they did it and they put dragons on the corners and <laughs> angels and the uh... You know, it's ridiculous, right? We should. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the orphan trains. We talked about that before we went live. Um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting aspect of of the history here. You know? Well, I think that I see. I think so. That is kind of like where I have started to like really under maybe understand, or like at least give you a possible explanation of what we're looking at. Uh -huh. So, as a Christian, I have you know kind of grown up like waiting for the return of Jesus. So we were like, we're waiting for, again, as everyone who's probably like, who's been to church at all, they know that like, hey, this could be the end times, the way everything seems like it's deteriorating and society is like basically breaking out into chaos on a daily basis. Uh -huh. But we started to like kind of basically revisit the scriptures and we we're like, you know what? Jesus actually seems pretty clear that he came back. He was coming back right away. Like if you read, if you go there and obviously that's a longer discussion to talk about that. Like, so some of us have, have come to the conclusion that Jesus says he was coming back in the generation. He was coming back in the first century. Mm -hmm. And then, so maybe if we're not waiting on the return of Jesus, is it possible that he came back when he said he was going to, and there was, a there was some kind of a age of peace and prosperity, you know, cause the Bible talks about a millennial reign. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that some of this stuff is evidence of that? Mm -hmm. Like that, again, it makes no sense unless, like, the, like again, this is the question. I guess this is always like the question that comes up a lot of times in the in the conspiracy spaces. All right, well, why would they lie about that? 
You know, like the, the most most normies would say, well, why would they lie about Washington, D.C.? Why mm -hmm. would they lie about the building? Mm -hmm. Well, this is, gives a, a reason why they might lie. And mm -hmm. this is and this is a possible thing where we were talking about, like, there's a there's a kind of a not often quoted part in the Bible that talks about in Revelation chapter 20. There's the millennial age. And so Satan is bound during the thousand year reign of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then after that reign, he's the Satan is let out. And so despite the fact that there's this great age of peace and prosperity, Satan is let out and he deceives the nations again. And basically at some point they, they go to make war with Jesus and the saints again. And That's so, yeah, so it's, so all that being said, is it possible that like as a Christian, I've always wondered, well, how could he deceive everyone? So are you, are you saying we're deceived? Well, I'm, so, well, I'm yeah. Well, it's I mean, pretty so, obvious, actually, to me. Well, if you think about it, it's like when you look under every stone and you realize you've been lied to about, like, we've been lied to about basically everything. I think mm -hmm. at this point, I think that I'm not, I'm not sure what we've been told the truth about. Yeah. So if, so if there's a time where the devil deceives everyone, and if there was this age that was good before, is it possible that the the devil was would try to lie about our history? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes sense. And so I don't know. I mean, of course, like I said, obviously this is this is a bigger topic. And if you guys are interested in hearing more about this, I've got some podcasts about it, like breaking it down specifically. But 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 sort of made sense was if if the thousand year reign ended, let's just say it ended right around the late 1700s, maybe early mm -hmm. 1800s. Yep. It kind of makes a little sense because other than we don't really know what happened, maybe around that time frame, we know that. The earliest pictures we have, we see e these amazing cities, like in the 1850s, with mm -hmm. no one around. Very eerie pictures of like just, just amazing buildings, barely any people around. There's mud everywhere. There look like there was a, a natural disaster. And then the only time you ever do see people, they look like aristocrats. Mm -hmm. You don't see normal people in these places. And then yeah, then you get into like where where is everyone at? And then very shortly after it, like you see, uh, like almost like a continuation of the story, you have orphan trains. Mm -hmm. And so orphans are, I mean, in America, and it's a, this, is, this blows me away. I think it was, I'm not sure what the year start was, but I think it was somewhere around 1850, 1860 to like the, um, I think late 18 or 1920s. Yeah. There was yeah, 250,000 250, orphans going around in trains just in the United States. And of course, if you think about it, like in today's term, that is a massive number. But in those days, yeah. we're told we're told that the world population in 1800 was a billion people. Mm -hmm. So, again, you'd have to like multiply that number by eight times. And then what would that number be? Maybe even more because the United States had a much lower population then. I think there was yeah. like tw I think it was like 20 or 30 million people. So it might be more like 10 times. Yeah. Like, keep in mind, this is the historical accounts version the number it could right be more. right so so is it possible that i mean what makes sense to me was there was something i mean whatever whatever take you want to have it something really bad happened mm -hmm. and it seemed like there was something that wiped a lot of people out and then what you see like i said what you see in these pictures is people dressed to the nines when you see them yeah. or or you see really poor orphans going around in trains and it seemed like they tried to repopulate the place. And, yeah. and, and at the very same time, you also have insane asylums filled to the brim. I think they had, I think it was like, so it's interesting if you think about the, the numbers game. So you have 250,000 orphans mm -hmm. going around, you know, in this certain time period. At the same time, you have 150,000 people locked up in the insane asylums in America. Yeah. yeah. Which is like, the, the numbers kind of make sense where it's like, where did these kids come from? And that's not to mention the prisons as well, the jails right. themselves. Right. right. Often gets overlooked in this, and you know, in the, when we're talking about the asylums, you know, it's all car incarceration of, of, of a different type, I guess. But, yeah. Well, then, see, they, but you look at, and then you look at the buildings that are supposedly the orphanages, the sane asylums, and the prisons. Mm -hmm. And I said, you, like I said, somebody who just thinks about, like, I mean, if you just think rationally, if if somebody started to build a a castle and they'd be like, Hey, what are you building over there? 
oh, it's an insane asylum. Oh, it's a prison. It's an yeah. orphan. Like people would be like, why are they like, why is the state spending that much money on that thing? Yeah. Or like, yeah. why are they, why would anybody spend that much money on that? Because again, they wouldn't. So what's more likely is that these places were repurposed. Yeah. And, well, again, you have impossible build times um, and ridiculous reasoning for building the way they did. So it's, the story is not believable to begin with anyway. Right. No. So, I mean, it's, so I think that is where you get into like the, you know, that, that makes a little sense. I mean, again, whether you believe like my, my, I know I, it's a far bridge, even I know for Christians, because we get rejected saying this all the time, but it makes sense in a way that there was something that happened and whatever happened, it is the biggest lie. I mean, again, I don't, I don't care what side of like, you know, the, what you believe in your, your belief in a God. Yeah. If you're, if you're listening to this, you, I think you're probably likely on the same page that whatever happened that they don't want you to know about is the biggest thing that they, that they could possibly lie about. Yeah. So again, you have to think about it in that kind of way where why would they lie about this kind of thing? What? Like, yeah. like just think about it. So if you're like, if you're into this space and you're into this, the old world stuff, what we believe now is they burn cities down on purpose. Mm -hmm. They like, as we saw Penn Station, they demolished a building greater than you've ever seen in your whole life mm -hmm. in order to, to in order to cover something up. Mm -hmm. So to me, yeah, you really, I mean, it's it. There's no, there's nothing you could imagine that's too big to think they could have lied about at this point because I think that again, this, they literally burned down almost every city in America in the 1800s or somebody did accidentally. And clearly they're trying to take us further away from God, um, trying to separate us from the spiritual. That's been mm -hmm. a process that's been ongoing throughout this the last hundred years, really, or I guess the last 60, 70 years. So clearly they're trying to move us to a point where um, we're disconnected from that, uh, that what we may have been here, what we mm -hmm. call the old world. You know, to the point where we we don't even believe our true past, which is kind of where we're at, I guess. For the for the normies, we don't even believe that this could be our past. You know. Well, isn't it? What's that? The the famous phrase is, "Those those who are ignorant of 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 history are doomed to repeat it." One hundred percent. Yeah. And, it, exactly. and it, do, it does feel it. Like I said, it does feel like that. That makes so much sense in this space where like that we are like got the pedal to the metal, about to go over a cliff, and and people don't. They they really don't want to believe that that the controllers or whoever you want to say would do what they would do. But if you if, but if you believe what we're talking about, like there was a reason why there's empty cities. I mean, so I mean, what makes sense to me was those cities were once full because again, like why would there be these these massive popul you know why would there be a massive you know like metropolitan area in like San Francisco if there was nobody in the pictures. Mm -hmm. I mean, I imagine at some point there were people, there were people there and there wasn't after a while. Whereas like Dresden, I think was it in like um, St. Petersburg. There's lots of pictures like in Europe that uh -huh. are just so eerie uh -huh. that are like, they look like huge cities and there's no one there. Yeah. So obviously it's like, you know, like, unless you just think that they picked a day when no one went outside their house to take the picture. Yeah. I heard well, somebody, somebody actually had a good take about that. And it's like, it's always good to put your, 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 like your, basically your, your mind in somebody else's, you know, like put yourself in somebody else's skin for one second. If a person took a picture of that city with no one there, I, I believe it's possible that the, the, the cameraman had intention there, mm -hmm. that that's what, maybe that's what the goal was. It was to take a picture of a completely empty city. That's, that's like yeah. completely spooky. Well, I think that's what it was. That's humanity coming out. You know, even in certain servants of the controllers, possibly. And maybe that's what art really is, is expressing what we are, despite the stranglehold, you know, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, you're sneaking it in there, um, but the controllers miss it for some reason. And it seems to slip through the cracks. Well, I think I, I, I think that it's like at some point, I remember um, if you guys follow Paul from Understanding Conspiracy, he mentioned that like, there's so, only so much, I mean, again, this stuff is worldwide, right? Mm -hmm. So like, there's only a certain amount that they could probably get rid of because mm -hmm. again, like, like the United States might be a unique example of this kind of stuff because 
for one, it doesn't make sense to the timeline. Like, like, like no. Europe, Europe makes sense because it's got a, it's got a very long history, right? But America supposedly does not. So, no. and, 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 and America does have a lot of money. So maybe America is a place that could afford to trash perfectly good buildings in order to build stuff again. And a lot of places they would say, no, you can't destroy well, that because South we America has got a lot of evidence as well. Well, yeah. right. Isn't that, well, I said, it's kind of funny. And again, like if, if the timeline of South America and North America are similar, why is there so many more grand buildings, old world buildings, like yeah, in South America than there are in like, let's just say Texas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense unless those places could not afford to, Get yeah, rid they of didn't them. have the means. They didn't have the means, right? Australia too is pretty, pretty spectacular. South oh, Africa, yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it's 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 pretty pretty amazing. Realm wide, you can you can uh, you can see this. But yeah, like the rise of the empire, the American empire, right? And the, the laying the groundwork. The robber barons, I talk about a lot too. Yeah. You know? Um, I think that whole story in the industrial age, um, and the and the money and the, the Federal Reserve and all of that kind of stuff all gets sort of it's all part of the story here. I don't, I don't know how everything fits together, but. Oh, I think that, that again, I, it, that's the funny thing is like, I, I, I love that one meme. I don't know if you've seen it. It's like, there's a guy and it was like guy sleeping in history class. And it said me in history class. And then me, yeah, me in history in school. And then versus me in history as an adult, <laughs> like yeah. researching my own. It's like, or versus Charlie day from it's only sunny in Philadelphia, like connecting all the dots. Yeah. yeah. That, that I, I started to become more interested in history as I got older and I watched this show and I, and now I realize how kind of cheesy it was, but the men who built America and it's all about the robber barons. And so when I started to learn a little bit more about this stuff, I actually went to Asheville, North Carolina with my wife and we went to uh, the Biltmore state. And again, that's like the biggest, that's the biggest mansion in the United States. And it was built by like, I think Cornelius Vanderbilt's like grandson. Yeah. And, and but I was watching that show and I was paying more attention to it. And I'm like, wait a minute. So he was he was born in the 1700s. And I'm like, he's kind of responsible for like a lot of the railroad stuff. And I was like, wow, that's that wasn't that long ago. Yeah. But it but it was also long enough ago where it's like he was born when George Washington was president. Yeah, and I, thought, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. So you're kind of like, wait a minute. And and as I'm watching that show, and I thought one thing that really made, never made any sense to me, I'm like, these guys are obviously are so rich and they seem so greedy and they seem so awful. But at the same time, yeah, look at this place. We would, we would visit this thing. Yeah. How nuts is that place? Yeah. Cornelius it, always it's, has... it's, it's out in the boonies in North Carolina. And it of course is, the, it. the, Va the Vanderbilts are from New York or at least they're from, I think they're from like the Netherlands. I like, like uh, originally, but like, sounds like it, but like, but why would they build that house in North Carolina? That's what I was really kind of wondering. But, um, but the interesting part about it was that, they kept on saying that the railroads had been overbuilt and I like, I never quite understood what that meant. I was like, wait a minute. Like, why would they ever build too many of them? Because wouldn't you just kind of build them from like, I don't know, a factory to a big city or like city mm -hmm. to city. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was, that was like an emphasis in the show that like he had to keep shipping stuff because the railroads had been overbuilt. And I thought, wait a minute, that makes no sense. And then I saw later picture you know i saw like a lot of these old pictures of them people digging up railroad tracks mm -hmm. and i thought wait a minute maybe the railroads are way older than that because that actually makes more sense because why would they have railroads that they didn't need ever digging out and repairing i think a lot of that yeah and then yeah, yeah then if like i said then you have like the obviously the, the most famous robber baron is is john d rockefeller Mm -hmm. And so Rockefeller was actually would in order to create his monopoly, he would buy oil refineries and even like I think even like Carnegie as well, they would buy factories and just shut them down. So mm -hmm. I was like, why? So why would why would Vanderbilt even need to worry about too many railroads? Why wouldn't he just ship to where he he could make money? Yeah. <laughs> but but again, it's like but I think that there's it's like it's a story. You know, it's again, it's like I think these are like it's a you tell one lie. And then you got to tell a bunch of lies because otherwise it doesn't make sense. And it really makes no sense that like four or five guys could build a whole country in like, like, a, a, like basically in their lifetime. 
Yeah, and then, then they completely <laughs> overhaul everything. They overhaul the education system, the medical system. They overhaul everything, and that's even conventional history. It's pretty obvious they're setting up a civilization. It's well, they're they're setting up what they really have done, and they've set up a story again. Like so, if, so if Rockefeller, if you think about it, like he's the guy who's responsible for the oil industry, basically, like, basically like the modern fossil fuel industry that we know it. Yeah. If if it's possible that that some of these old world buildings were basically had an access to clean energy, you know, through like the mm -hmm. ether or magnetism, however. It, could have possibly happened. Mm -hmm. That seems like a clean, renewable energy. Well, John D. Rockefeller's business was doing the opposite. <laughs> so, so, yep. so that's another good reason why they would lie. And again, like that. Of course, I remember. I think one of the old famous conspiracy theories was um, was a guy who built an engine that ran off water. Yeah. And and I was like, well, if your business was was selling petroleum products, would you ever let somebody? Make an engine that, that ran off water? Not if I didn't, unless I wanted to go out of business. And unless you wanted to go, unless you wanted to go out of business. And the guy who has all the money is, would he let that happen? And then you just think like, that's the world we live in. Mm -hmm. Where did, why would they ever let us have free energy when they can charge for it? Yeah, it's and, pretty obvious too, really. It's it's become more and more obvious over time. Yeah, I mean, but, like, but it's, it, I think it's amazing, like, especially obviously all the pictures you're showing. It, this is endless. It is, yeah, and it's it's amazing. It wasn't visible before now, which which makes me uh, makes me wonder what 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 do you think of the time that we're living through right now? What's your take on that? I mean, I feel like that a lot of people have noticed a shift. I mean, I, it was funny because I was even saying like that we see these eerie pictures of like empty cities, which is interesting. Like during the pandemic, there was pictures of empty cities, right? Like you can imagine those yeah, pictures coming yeah. up. You can imagine those pictures coming out one day and people being like very confused by them. And then then we see the pictures of like the the orphan trains, right? Yeah. Well, what if what if they showed pictures of the caravans going to the United States border? <laughs> and people would be very confused by that because they'd be yeah. like, what was going on then? That like like our minds, of course, like as people who like, you know, you and I, we would say do we really believe those poor people decided to walk from Honduras to the United States? Mm -hmm. Or is it more likely that somebody's funding them to get there? Yeah. And but for what reason? And I really I was actually thought I was thinking about this as like it's a very terrifying thought to think that that maybe those are the modern day orphan trains and they're the replacements for you know for the people who are living in the in the place right now. And that's you know, not, and of course, like I said, this is not a, this is not me being like a xenophobe or anything like I that, know, but it's, it's know, like, it's like, it's like literally like that if you imported a, a poor class that does not know our history, mm -hmm. you could tell them whatever. That's right? what I was going to say. What if they had just started going around to all these buildings and slapping a new plaque on them with a different date, like 1940 instead of 1902. And then you and I are looking at it and saying, Hey, that's not true. That plaque used to say 1902. But we get hauled off to the asylum and then the new population <laughs> comes in and they're like, hey, that was built in 1942. And then we just move forward. <laughs> you know, you could see how it how it may have been done by looking at what's happening now. We maybe have a, gained some insight into what may have happened in the past as well. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, well, if you think about it like that, that that's a, so to go back to the idea that maybe this is a this is a time where post post-millennial age of like reign of Christ age, mm -hmm. they literally said that one of the top reasons that they were locking people in the sane asylums was basically um, like religious zealotry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, and then there's, they're, they're, they're calling them lunatics. And I think they were saying like my buddy found um, alpha talks, found some of these articles that actually said that people were calling themselves saints and stuff in these, these articles. And it's like, I mean, I don't know what it means other than like that. Put it this way. Yeah. If, if if you knew that people you knew that that were basically like us uh, in those days and they said, no, it did not happen the way it did. And then they put that person in a sane asylum. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, there's not a lot of benefit to to deny what the controllers are trying to tell people what's happening. No. 
No, you're not going to parrot what the person who got put in the asylum has been saying because you'll get put in the asylum. So you're going to quickly change your tune. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Yeah, I mean, what well, I mean, well, what benefit is there to to speak the truth in that kind of time? And it's like, exactly. I think that that maybe I feel like that the, the times we're living in now that, you know, part of, I mean, there's a lot of, there's probably a net negative on society because of the internet and social media and that stuff. But I feel like that, you know, a lot of us are using this the best way we can in order to, you know, we're in the information age and we're kind of like trading back ideas. And there's a lot of us kind of putting these things together, but I mean, you could imagine like in a, in a time where you're very isolated, like, yeah, what benefit would you be like? They didn't build that last year. What are you, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, they're like, yeah, you're gonna get hauled off to the to the nut house because you denied when the building was, you know, like because you wanted to argue about when a building was built. Yeah, or you had a different version of the past of that area, you know, and it doesn't it only doesn't take that long. You can see down through our timeline, um, World War One, World War Two, on, on all the other wars we were talking about earlier as well, how easy it is to erase the past. You know, and after World War Two, the, the implementation of all the technologies, the mind control technologies like the television and um, Hollywood, we really ramping up. It's quite easy to see how visible um, that uh, control mechanism is and, and tightening that noose of, of, per, of our perception. That, that picture right there is insane. Beijing. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you, you really could. I mean, you honestly could have put any kind of uh, city on there. That's the last one I would have thought, thought that that picture was from, though. Yeah, it's a narrative buster. Yeah, this one, it's a, like, it's so ridiculous, you know. And it, it is fun, and a fun topic to research, too. One other thing I wanted to ask you, too, about is, uh, are you familiar with Anatoly Fomenko, the Russian mathematician? Um, who did research? I, I've, I've heard that. So was it, was his, did he... Was he one somebody who was looking into like the um the basically the the cosmology to be able to figure out the the timeline? Yes. I know he was yes, he's suggesting that the, basically the Jesuits have, a, have a distorted our timeline, um, um, and stretched it out and inserted. Well, some people say inserted a thousand years, but certainly inserted events and duplicated events. Um, you know, things like Louis the 14th, 13th, 12th, 11th, and all the rest of it. Um, the Dark Ages, how we have very little information on the Dark Ages. So he's suggesting that the um, his historical timeline has been uh, stretched out. So you know what? I mean, it makes sense to me. Actually, I said the, the thing that I found very uh, interesting is I'm probably, I'm sure a lot of people have seen that video by, um, was it Ar Arwana? I'm not sure how you say his name. Yeah, Awar. Awar. Yeah. And he was, he did the Lost History of Flat Earth. And one of the things that really kind of, blew my mind was the maps and so when he was talking about like the like so we have the the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn and mm -hmm. so the the way those were designated were in the time of the age of aries and so the age of aries was before jesus came so obviously you know whether you you're christian or not you know that we're told that that they changed the calendar based on when christ came so anno Dom, domino is the the age or yeah i think that's how i'd say it. um yeah. the age of our lord and yeah. so but the maps came from the before in the bc time before christ mm -hmm. well for some reason they did not update the maps to to designate the times of like where i think they said the tropics would have changed based on the the, the astronomical age we're in because mm -hmm. that would have moved we'd have moved from aries to pisces yeah and so in Pisces, it would have been the Tropic of uh, Sagittarius, I believe, and the Tropic of Gemini. Hmm. Yeah. So it's very suspect that, again, as if, if we're told that, that the explorers would have needed to navigate based on the stars at times so they wouldn't get lost, well, then clearly they would have updated the maps. Yeah. So if they didn't, well, again, the, the maps are either unreliable or maybe maybe those maps are more reliable than you realize and the, the ages are all twisted up because mm -hmm. I was saying that it's, it's interesting when you actually kind of understand what your Bible says. Mm -hmm. So, and this, and this makes sense again on a, on a flat plane earth mm -hmm. is that Genesis 1 14 says that God put the sun, the moon and the stars in the firmament for, for signs. Number one, for seasons, number two, 
for days, number three, and for years, number four. And so, again, so it's interesting if you think about it, like, so you would know what time of day it is based on where the sun is at in the sky. You think about like, if you have a sundial, you would know, you would know what time of day it is. And then, so, so the moon is in, the moon is in the sky and it tells you the months, the moons. Mm -hmm. It tells you when, when the months are. Obviously the sun also can tell you based on the, the solstices, what time of year it is, but the but the constellations, the zodiac or the Maserat, the way it turns, it actually tells you the season you're in. And then to go to a more macro view, that there's the procession of the seasons as well that tells mm-hmm. you the astronomical age you're in. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so if that guy, which it sounds like he probably knows his stuff, if he can calculate the astronomical age, then, yeah, he can probably poke holes in that again, like but people don't know that what I just said, like they don't understand, like they think that the, the Zodiac is just for horoscopes and uh-huh. for, you know, like, am I going to find love or riches and stuff like that? But like, literally, that's what that's what God is saying in Genesis, that the sky is a clock. Uh-huh. And that's why they actually and again, like you go to some more old world stuff. There's those astronomical clocks that are like that. Yeah. It's mind blowing. Uh, it's yeah, it's mind blowing to see that they actually have all that stuff on there because like, that's what it's for. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, yeah, so I do, I do believe that, I mean, the timeline makes no sense. I mean, I guess, it, but it, it, the more you look into it, the more you get a little confused by it. I, I mean, I guess, I guess I, I could believe that guy, but I don't know enough about it to, to say how, how correct he is. Yeah, no, I think it's an interesting idea and, uh, it, it would definitely serve the controllers to distort the timeline. But, you know, like you said, people ask why would they do that? Well, why wouldn't they do that if they're trying to maintain control over us, us who are unaware of what actually happened in the past and who unaware of who and what we actually are. We're, not, we're out of touch with who and what we are, I think. Um, well, I think, well, well, I think if, again, like again, if, if you're, if you're ignorant of history, you're doomed to repeat it. And obviously maybe that's their goal. I mean, it, it does kind of seem interesting if you if you think about the timeline that we know of, that it does seem like that the world population was very small in the 19th century. And then you have these organ organ trains, uh, orphan trains shipped around the world yeah. and it starts to get repopulated. Fast forward into like what, like the, the baby boomer age in like the mid 20th century. They're already talking about how the population of the world's too high. Yeah. Right. And obviously yeah. that's only continued into where we live now. And it really does seem like, I mean, this is this is obviously my hypothesis, is that that there was a time where there was this aristocrat class. They were not going to work in the factories, so they needed a they needed a lower class, a slave class, to go work the jobs they would not do. Uh-huh. They got that, and then as you have the progression of how people procreate, you know, it expanded rapidly, uh-huh. and now they don't want that. You know, and and so like it's like literally like the idea is like they it does feel like that whether it's like just the controllers and I don't want I don't want to give them too much power in this. Yeah, because yeah, I, 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 I do believe I do believe there's a spiritual component to this mm-hmm. that, that it could only work if there was that. Yeah, there's a there is a possible resetting of the deck. And and then the, the general public who doesn't want to talk about scary things, they rather believe the dumbest you know, the dumbest lies, they don't understand that yet. Like literally these people really are walking people up to the gallows. Cause I think that mm-hmm. they've done it before. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think that's what I say. Like if they've done it before, then they'll, then they will do it again. Yeah, and then if we just come to the understanding that they have done it before, maybe we can all become conscious of that fact and deal with the situation. Maybe that's what I'm hoping for par- partially with what I do in my channel. So. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it, it could also be the other lie is the fact that isn't it interesting what they did decide to build after they decided to destroy some of these glorious buildings mm-hmm. is I I saw a video some years ago and it was from um, I think it might have been banned from YouTube. But this guy, Paul Joseph Watson, mm-hmm. um, and he I think he was showing an older video and it was about architecture and it was basically about like that how they were destroying old buildings and they were building the, that brutalist style. Uh And, and it was all about kind of a, it was, it was different. It was the first time I'd ever really heard this, that that's saying like that when you see a beautiful building, there is something that obviously inspires you to, 
to more than you than you're doing now. Uh-huh. It makes you feel a certain way versus the brutalist style that literally the sight of it is oppressive. It's like you, like the inside of a prison is yeah. what it looks like. And then those buildings are are treated poorly. The neighborhoods turn into disrepair versus like you can imagine places that are like that are beautiful. They get gentrified. Right. People yeah. fix up older buildings and they make them look nice because for one, they last for a long time. If you te- if you if you treat them right. Yeah versus the stuff they built in the 60s and 70s that are just ugly and they just demo them because they're ugly eyesores and they're worthless yeah. and they but it's like it's it's like this idea that it it those kind of ugly places beget ugly behavior uh-huh. versus places that are beautiful that make you want to treat people better because it's like there is a something there's something deep in us that knows that we're capable of more Mm-hmm. And I and it really does feel like, especially in these days, that they they want us to think we're capable of less. And yeah. obviously, that's a self fulfilling prophecy. Is that like that that people don't? It's like I said, why? Like it's the idea that if you could cook a you know if you could cook a steak versus mm-hmm. go and get um, a a cheeseburger that's really not even real meat because mm-hmm. it's easier and it's faster, and it probably costs about the same now. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like that. What kind of meat are you talking about? No, sorry, we won't go there. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like that. That's like. That, but yeah, like that. People don't. People would just ra- you'd rather just settle for just like the yeah, you know, yeah. tape, table scraps versus like we're we, yeah, we're way more capable. And I I do think that at this point it's like it's pretty hard to imagine that that people are going to wake up from that. And yeah, like, unless, like I said, unless they really, unless they really know like what these people do not have our best interests and they never have. Yeah. I think we're all hoping for some sort of grand revelation where the normies all of a sudden wake up and, uh, and you join us and in, invest in our search for truth. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, but it, it can be very frustrating sometimes. They are trying to crush our spirits, but um, I think uh, f- we find like-minded people, not so much in our daily lives as much as uh, through this medium, I suppose that we're using right now. Well, it does. It, it does feel like it's. I mean, I, it does feel like I'm. I'm noticing a shift. I mean, I guess it. I don't want to be too tunnel vision because, obviously, the the my platform's getting bigger. Um. So, and I wasn't doing this a couple of years ago. So, like, obviously, there's there's at least one more person because of me because that I'm that person, and I know a lot of people. My friends have very similar journeys, and we are like I said, we are kind of peeling back the onion. And so we're, we're all learning together. And I feel like it's kind of interesting that we're all kind of getting to the similar place where that a lot of us probably the, the buildings, as I said, the funny thing was like, I really became a conspiracy theorist when I started to question the rocks. And I said, oh, I don't trust that rock anymore. It looks weird. Like that doesn't look normal. And then, yeah, questioning the, the rocks in the buildings, the things that have always been right there. And like, so why? So questions about how did the Grand Canyon get formed? Uh-huh. Do you really believe that a, that the Colorado River did that? And if it didn't, what did it? And why can't you go there? And like those kind of questions, like those are, they don't seem that important. But if, but the fact that they that they're lying about it is important. Again, that's why I always say like to to think about like if you believe the things we're saying in this chat, you believe they've lied about something big. And if they lied about something this big it's to cover up something even bigger because again, it makes no sense to burn buildings down, destroy buildings to build lesser buildings, unless you're really trying to cover up like the, the crime of this, the crime, not, not the crime of the century, <laughs> the crime of all time. Of all time. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That was, that's well put. And I think that's a good, good place for us to end on. Um, I could, I could chat with you for all night, really. Your, your insights are, uh, are, uh, very valuable and enjoyable to listen to. So I appreciate you joining me here on my channel. JT. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate your audience for having me here to um, let me kind of just go and stream a consciousness. <laughs> rant yeah, that's fun. That. I find it fun. Anything else you want to throw in before we sign off here? No, I was just, like I said, I was just, I would just encourage people. Like I said, if you want to hear more about like what I was talking about, like the, the, the idea of like that Jesus came back and we're in this, this age of deception um, I've got more content on that and we're going to, we're talking more about this stuff. And, and if, if you guys got, and of course, if you guys got anything in the chat that you want to shoot my way, that, 
to kind of confirm some of the things I'm saying, please do that. I, I do feel like that the only way we're going to really get better at this stuff is to help each other. Because I think, again, like I, as you've seen, I'm sure that you benefit greatly from the people who send you stuff because like you, oh, yeah. could, you could never research all this year on your own. It's a two way street. This is how this works for sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So you have a link tree and you're on a bunch of different platforms so people can check you out. I have the Instagram and the YouTube linked in the description and I hope we could do this again sometime. Absolutely, man. This was, this was a blast. Like I said, if you, um, yeah, if you guys, yeah, just, just, just hit me up. Yeah. I'm JT follows JC on pretty much everything. I got a link tree, um, Instagram and YouTube. You can find me probably the most regularly, but, um, I'm on pretty much everything <laughs> that, the, that they haven't banned me off of yet. <laughs> All right, and I thank you all for joining us here tonight. And if you're watching the recorded version, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. All right, God bless. God bless.